The humble hinge is pivotal for parts that need to move, but how should you go about designing them for 3D printing? Well, in this video, I'll walk you through the design and functionality of five different hinges which swing, snap, and lock, so you can turn your 3D printed projects into articulated awesomeness. My name is Angus, this is Maker's Muse, and no, I will not apologize for the puns. Let's get started. Let's start with a simple question. Why would you need a hinge at all? Well, hinge designs extends well beyond the ones that hold your door on. And when it comes to mechanical design, they're a fantastic way of constraining parts together while still allowing precise, controllable movement. This could be for the lid of a box, a handle which swings into place, or one of many hinges within a complex mechanical linkage. And thanks to the precision of modern 3D printers, it's totally viable to print precise, durable hinges right into your design. But before you fire up your CAD package of choice, you need to figure out which style of hinge suits your project best. And we'll start with the simplest of all, a butt hinge. These hinges incorporate two interlock components with a hole running through them for the pin, which constrains both sides while allowing them to rotate by a certain amount. And well, the easiest way to design and print a butt hinge is to do so separately and assemble it afterwards using something like a screw as the pin. Because the parts are printed separately, you don't really have to worry about them welding during the printing process, and a metal screw will easily outlast the print in terms of durability. I use this style of hinge all the time because it's simple, robust, and precise, plus the two sides can be separated again if required. However, by using a metal screw, it means you need to have one that's the right size, and if you digitally distribute your design online for other people to print all around the world, they'll have to find the same screw too, which isn't always that convenient. In that case, a print in place butt hinge might be more up your alley. This design takes advantage of bridging to span the bore between the two parts with a plastic pin. This means that once the print is complete, the hinge is ready to go and the two parts can never be separated. A print in place butt hinge is pretty clever, but it comes with a few downsides. First, you need to design in generous clearances between the parts, otherwise they will weld together during the printing process. Personally, I like to offset the faces by 0.3 millimeters, and it seems to work quite well for decent 3D printers with a 0.4 nozzle, but your mileage may vary. The design of the pin and bore also needs some attention if you want your hinge to work reliably. I find that the pin works best with a flattened bottom to assist the bridge in forming, and the bore benefits from a teardrop shape towards the top with an overhang angle of about 70 degrees. If you don't do this, the overhangs will become too severe and they'll droop, which can easily jam up the whole movement. Because the pin is plastic, these hinges need to be pretty chunky if you want them to be really strong. And because you need to incorporate clearances, I find it also results in a sloppier hinge than one that would be assembled with a screw or metal pin. But if you're chasing that satisfying print in place design and don't want to need any additional fasteners, then it's a great choice. But what if you want a more precise hinge that still doesn't need any additional fasteners? Well, a snap hinge might be the right choice for you. I based this hinge design off snap fasteners used in injection molding, and the principles translate surprisingly well to 3D printing. A snap hinge is printed in two parts and then assembled afterwards and relies on the ability of the plastic to flex and snap into place. By precisely controlling offsets and the wall thickness of the snapping detail, you can change how loose or tight the resulting hinge actually is, which is super handy. The interlocking detail of the snap hinge also plays a large part in how the hinge performs. For example, you can taper the interlocking detail like this, which provides a wedge for the part to flex up and into place as you push the parts together, which is great for ease of assembly, but also means that the two halves can be pulled apart again with enough force. This variation, however, has its edges at 90 degrees and it needs to be manually flexed into position. This one tiny detail change results in a much stiffer hinge and one that you would really struggle to pull apart, but it's also way harder to assemble. 
This version also has small design changes to remove the need for support material. It's got that little teardrop shape up the top of the bore and this tiny chamfer at the bottom of the pin. Pretty clever stuff. And you know what else might be clever? Checking out the Black Friday deals from this video's sponsor, Micro Center. Right now until the end of November, Micro Center has deals on everything tech from Microsoft tablets to racing and flight sims, and of course, 3D printers. The A1 Mini from Bamboo Lab is my favorite compact 3D printer right now, and you can pick one up for only $200 in store, which is quite frankly incredible. It comes fully assembled and has all the automatic features you need to get printing quickly and reliably. So if you're a newbie to 3D printing or wanna add just a little bit of extra capability to your workshop, I highly recommend checking it out. In fact, why not pair it with the Microsoft Surface Pro 11th edition with 16 gigs of RAM for only $800 and you've got a killer portable design studio. You can find these deals and more in the description below. So check them out and head on to your nearest micro center. Big thanks to Mike Center for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back to the hinges. And this next one is alive. Well, sort of. Living hinges are everywhere. I guarantee you've got heaps in your house right now. They're used in all kinds of cheap injection molded plastic products for one reason and one reason only. They're cheap. In fact, <laughs> they're essentially free. A living hinge is simply a thin strip of plastic, usually the same plastic that the product is molded from, but because it's so thin, it can easily bend and flex and acts just like a hinge. And believe it or not, you can 3D print living hinges as well, but be warned, living hinges are not designed for long-term use. In fact, they're kind of crap. Have you ever wondered why cheap containers break after just a little while? Well, it's usually those hinges that fail. That thin strip of plastic can only withstand being bent back and forth so many times before it snaps. 3D printed living hinges, in my experience, are even more fragile than these cheap containers. Depending on the hinge design, I would only expect a 3D printed living hinge like the one in this design to last a handful of times before failing. So I tend to use 3D printed living hinges as part of the assembly process of something 3D printed rather than a constantly used detail. But don't let that discourage you from using 3D printed living hinges in your design. And Slant 3D actually has an excellent video all about living hinge design and the various approaches you can take. I highly recommend checking it out. You can find it linked right here. Now it's time to get excited because we're moving on to some advanced hinging. Recently, I've been experimenting with combining indexing features into hinges. This hybrid approach lets you incorporate separate states into a design simply through its design features. Let me demonstrate. This print in place hinge can rotate up and down to its limits just like the previous design. But instead of having a pin with a circular cross section, it has more of a rectangular one. And instead of a standard cylindrical bore, it has this tapered rectangular track that protrudes out the top. This means that when the hinge is at a certain orientation, the pin aligns with this track and the entire assembly changes into this new state. I'd like to say I came up with this idea all on my own, but I first saw it used in the handle of a shopping basket. In this case, the handle was free to rotate until it was at 90 degrees above the basket. In this orientation, the pin would move up slightly into a detail that would lock it in place, allowing you to shop without the basket swinging all over the place. Yeah, yeah, only an industrial designer could be so fascinated by a shopping basket handle. Don't at me. To demonstrate just what you can do with 3D printed hinges, I designed this. It's a folding GoPro stand, which incorporates several of the hinge designs I've talked about in this video. The legs are designed with integrated print in place butt hinges that have that locking detail. So when you move them into position, they lock in place holding the stand up. I'm not gonna say it's the most practical GoPro stand, but considering the whole thing is 3D printed, I think it's pretty neat. With a bit of careful design work, you really can design awesome articulated things for 3D printing, but I would love to hear from you how you use 3D printed hinges in your projects in the comments below. In the description, you can find links to all of the hinges I've shown in this video, as well as links to Micro Center's awesome Black Friday deals. Big thanks to them for sponsoring this video, and I'll catch you guys again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Bye.